Hi, I'm Sandra Hawkins, and I want to show you a bit more on methods. So this is methods part two. So in the previous example, we had a, a very basic method called print hello. It didn't take in any, any parameters and didn't return any values. So I'm going to carry on working in here and I'm going to create another method. So if I make this private, it means it can only be accessed or used or called in this class and not any other one. Um, I'm going to keep it this void, which means this method won't return anything either. And I'm going to call it double my number. So I've made up that name. I have to include a set of round brackets after that. And I'm going to put in the curly brackets as well for the body of the method. And I have to include those too. So what I'm going to do here is this is going to take in a value. So it's going to take in an int and I'm going to call it number. I'm going to pass in a number, which will be an int, a whole number. And this method is going to double it, multiply it by two and display the result. So the parameters there that I've taken in. So an int that could be any data type, like a, a Boolean or um, a car, a string and so on. So in here, um, I'm going to create probably too many lines of code for this, but I'm going to put in um, int result so that declares a variable that will hold the result or the answer i could give it a value on the same line but i'm going to put it on the next line result equals the number that was passed in multiplied by two and then i'm going to print out the result so s out and control space will give me a call to system out or print line and then the result result is and i'm going to concatenate on there uh, the value stored in the variable result. Now, so this method, again, it, it won't do anything unless I call it, and I'm going to call it from main. And when I call it, I have to pass in one int. So up here in main, call the method by its name. Now, main is static. It can only directly call other methods that are also static, and this isn't static. So to get around that, I have created an instance of this class. I called it my method. So I instantiated there with new methods and I need to use that variable name. So my method dot uh, double my number. And I'm going to pass it in. I can pass in a, use a variable name here or pass in a literal. So say I pass in 12. So when I run this program, it will call the print hello once, twice. I'm going to move that end of main statement to the end of main. Um, now I, uh, it will call double my number and pass in 12. So 12 will get sent down and this will become a local variable that can only be seen in that method. Double my number. It'll have 12 inside it. Result is declared to hold an int. Result gets the value of, so right hand side, two times 12. That will be stored in result. And the next line, I'll print out the result is, and that will print out 24. So I'm going to hit run just to see there the result is 24. Okay, so double my number. So that's a method that takes in a parameter. So I have to pass it in an int and it doesn't uh, return any value. So void means nothing is returned from it. Now I'm going to create a method that takes in uh, two values, so two parameters, and it's going to return a value as well. So down here, I'm going to uh, also, it's private because it's only called in the class that it's in. This method is going to return a double and I'm going to call this metal method get total price. So inside the round brackets, it's going to take in an int, I'm calling this quantity, and it's going to take in a double for the price. So this method expects to receive two values. Well, it has to. So the first one is going to be a whole number and the second one can contain a, a decimal place. So your method has to have uh, curly brackets. So this method now, after you have that typed in, it won't compile. So the compiler will tell you that it doesn't return a value. So this method must return a result of type double. If you've declared that it returns a double, it must return a double. So what it's looking for is a return statement in here. If I just put return zero, that will keep the compiler happy because it does return a value, but I don't want to re 
re to return zero, I want to, to return the quantity multiplied by the price. So I could do that in one line or I could declare um, a declare a variable to hold the result. So that's what I like to do. Double result, I think it makes the code easier to read. Double result and then result equals quantity multiplied by price. And now so it's a bad idea to put return zero to start out with because I might forget to come back and uh, have that return result. So now again, this method won't do anything until it's called. So in main, just before the end of main, I'm going to use that instance of the class that I've declared in the first line of main. My methods dot, and there's my method there, get total price. I can pass in an int literal and a double literal. Instead of literals there, I could have declared um, int quantity equals 10 and double price equals 12.5. And now, a semicolon on the end of that line where you call the method. So quantity here refers to the variable on the, the previous two lines previous and price refers to the variable on the previous line. Now, just to take note here, there are variables declared inside this parameter list down on line 28 they are not the same as the variables declared on line 14 and 15. They happen to have the same name and that's okay. Where a variable is declared is the only place that it can be seen. So a variable is declared as those parameters inside that parameter list and those two variables can only be seen inside the curly brackets of that method. And up here in main, those variables declared on line 14 and 15 can only be, side, can only be seen inside the curly brackets in main. So when I pass in 10 and 12.5, they will get copied into these variables. 10 and 12.5, result will be declared to hold a double. Result gets the value of, so it's the right-hand side of that equals that will get executed first. That will be 10 times 12.5. That will get stored in result. And now it will be returned. So I'm just going to run this program. So you can see here. Um, I've printed out hello, just looking at the results as well, hello, print hello again, the result is 24, that comes from double my number, and then end of main, it has skipped this. So it was really, really important, when you call a method that returns a double, you have to do something with that return type, and I have done nothing with it. So the, the, value, so, um, the value will be returned, back to where I've called the method, but I haven't printed it, I haven't stored it in a variable, I haven't done anything with it. So what I need to do, and this is a common thing that you might forget, when you call a method, call it by its name, pass in the parameters that it expects, if it returns a value, I have to assign that to a variable, or I could put a print line around it, but I prefer to assign it to a variable. So because it returns a double, I'm declaring double result, and then on the next line after that, I'm going to print out, so again, S out and control space, the value returned from get total price is, and then I can concatenate that on. So it's the variable from the previous line, which is called result. So I'm going to run that again. So I have four lines of output right now. And when I run it again, so there it is. The value returned from get total price is 125.0. So that is it on methods. So what I've done in part two here, firstly, I put in a method called double my number, which takes one value in, must be an int. It takes that value that I passed in. So I passed in 12. It multiplies it by two, stores it in result. That's 24 and it gets printed out with a call to print line. Then execution goes back to main. Quantity is declared as 10. Price is declared as 12.5. Then I call the get total price method, which passes down a copy of 10 and 12.5 down to this method. So a copy of those are stored in extra variables that belong to this method. So 10 and 12.5. A result variable is declared. Um, 12, 10 is multiplied by 12.5, so 125 is stored in result, and 125 is returned back here on the right-hand side of the equals, 
So 125 gets assigned to result and I've printed that out on the next line and after that it will execute the final statement end of main. So that is um, an introduction to methods.